Welcome back, everybody. Last, uh, you know, we tricked, well, actually, we treated you this weekend, and now it's time for your trick. YouTube tricked us. YouTube tricked us. Uh, they pimped us out? In a way. They and hit us with a pimp stick right in the day. They dick. do make money off our videos that we don't get to collect on. Yeah. So they do kind of trick us. That's America for you. And this is a movie about tricks, because it's all Elon about Musk by YouTube. I know you're going to save Twitter. <laughs> He's hard at work. Yeah, I already got knocked off as a bot. They thought I was a bot. Right. Elon Musk is restoring comedy to Twitter. He said it himself. Thank God. Thank. I thought we were the only ones. God. Oh, boy, Murray. Uh, what it... And if you saw him on Saturday Night Live, you know Elon Musk is funny as shit. He brought sexiness back to M&M's. He did that whole skit about... Uh... First of all, we did that, first of all. Well, he did it in person. Oh, okay. And he did Mario yeah. Kart. We can't even touch that. Oh, Nintendo would fuck sue a, the shit fuck out of a us. Purple M&M, go Elon. fuck a purple M&M. Go fuck a purple M&M. Yeah. <sighs> Murray, what, saying? what was that beautiful fucking song we just heard? The Neon Slam! Weren't you going to... Are you done with YouTube? No, we'll get into it. You okay. just shoehorned that in there. I want to talk about... Neon Slime, Wing yeah. House. It's, it's Wing House. He's a triple threat, man. He's not only an actor. He's mm -hmm. an amazing singer. And he's a bitch slapper, as we'll talk about in this movie. Yeah. I mean, if you keep track of the tippy taps... He's you, definitely a threat. You already knew that Wings Howard, Wings Hauser's a bitch slapper. Yeah, he goes back bitch slapping before it was cool. Exactly. But yeah... Especially he, if you're named Ginger. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get into more of Wings and Vice Squad in a minute here, but... Just on the topic this of because con some controversies, controversies, controversies happening. Yeah. Oh my both god. Both of us. We're both in deep water. I don't. Is like we talked about our strike recently and how we couldn't put up any more YouTube stuff for for a week. And yeah, we're I, back. I just happened to check it. Yep. You can, be, you've already you're already enjoying the great Halloween episodes after Halloween. Oh yeah. Uh, years but, back. But they're up. These are like three years ago we did these fucking five things. Five years ago. Five years ago. You've been doing this for almost five years. The, a lot of the older ones were already up there, so I'm going yeah. back like to our second Halloween. Well, our first one wasn't up there. A lot of them are. I don't know. Maybe anyways. Wrong, but anyway. So, anyways. Uh, but yeah, I, I was following somebody on, on the old YouTubes, and if you remember, a little while ago... There was a video of some kind of Republican con congressperson running for office, and he his ad video that he rolled on TV and YouTube that is still not taken down had him rhino hunting. Are you familiar with the idea of rhino yeah, hunting? Yeah, I know. Yeah. So one, uh, one of these YouTubers I watched, he got uh, a strike and banned from – uh, doing any kind of content for a week because he showed the video and did commentary over it. Whereas that video is still live and well all over YouTube. Yeah. News channels are posting it, doing coverage of it, but he got banned for how, that video. How is our Ilsa episode still up? And that has like 18,000 views. Right. So you were just saying, 
Are you sure we can't say the C? Yes, I'm absolutely sure we can't say the C word. Cause it's not cunt. We, we can say cunt. We yeah. are not allowed to get away with anything because we're not big enough. You don't get we away unless you're over a main over 2,000 subscribers. subscribers. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. But we haven't even got the cupcake yet. No, yeah. They don't even allow us to t- we pick a even cherry got the you, yeah. let alone the cupcake. So we'll try to be more careful with our YouTube, but who knows? They might take us down. Maybe they'll finally find Ilsa and just take us yeah, down. Yeah, I bet there's probably some rats and jealous rats out there are going to report us or something. That could be it, too, because think about all the people. They probably were, they were probably pissed off because we know our most douchiest yep. uh, listeners are our Steven Seagal listeners. Yes. And, they, and, they, and I, I mean, I'm, as far as... They expect the movie, not the episode. Always, always. So and the, they, dolphin, yeah, the dolphins, and they're always Eastern Europeans. Why do you guys love Seagal so much? Anyway, yeah. So that's probably that. Some fucking Serbian rat fucking stole us out. Some war criminal probably raped somebody in the war in the nineties, <laughs> and then they're ratting on us. <laughs> that's right. In between invading Ukraine, they're out there trying to fucking. No, I'm talking about the fucking Serbian war in the nineties when they were doing ethnic cleansing. I don't know my Serbian wars Jesus that well. Christ, you were just you were alive then. I know nothing happened. Yeah, before I should you were probably alive. know every war that happened while I was alive. Yeah, you should. You're you not should. that old. There's too many wars to keep track too of. Many wars. Well, there was one that we got involved with. It was called the Serbian War. Okay. And it was about uh, ethnic. Do you know there used to be <laughs> two countries? There used to be Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia, and now there's like 50 million countries because of that fucking war. Okay. So was it a good or bad war? Well, if you think ethnic cleansing is good, <laughs> then yeah, it was great. Steve James was not That's involved. That's probably going to get us knocked off refuse. fucking YouTube. Yeah, right? we, yeah, Obvious you just, joke, but I'll get us knocked off. Yeah, we probably have to go erase all of that mm-hmm. right now. So anyways, Murray, that's my complaint. What's your complaint for the week? As, like I said, there's some, some controversies surrounding both of us. We'll get into yours. Yours is the worst. Yeah, I'm sure. But I want to set some records straight. Last couple episodes, I've been talking about midgets. I'm not... I, and people are accusing me of being a heightist. You are. No, I'm not a heightist. First of all, if anyone knows about the, the pain and the trauma of being a victim of heightism, it's me. Because you don't, you see, you don't, you don't know my life before I met you. If there was a time, all you did my, was study my wars. Biggest dream. No, I, I, I paid attention to the world as it's, as it's happening around me. It wasn't history. It was happening. I always, you know, I've always wanted to be a Chippendales dancer. This is true. Why can't I be a Chip Dale's dancer, Griff? Uh, it's because you're under six feet. Exactly. I studied tap, ballet, <laughs> uh, modern dance, hip hop, not all the things. And I, I'll go ahead and admit, Maria has BDE for days. Yes. What does that stand for? Big Dick Energy. Yeah. And I can't. I can't. I can't show share it with the world because I'm not six feet tall. I'm not going to. I'm a Chippendales dancer. I'm not an IKEA dancer. I'm not going to the under six foot route. Right? No, no, fuck Everybody that. should be allowed to be a Chippendales dancer if they have the moves. But will it turn into modern wrestling if they allow people under six feet? No. Next because thing you know, you're doing backflips and shit. Well, if they can't keep up with me, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's those goofy <laughs> tall motherfuckers. So this is, this is my issue with with little. I'll call them little people. I'll, I'll give in to you, Griff. The little people. I have absolutely no. It's not e- my rule. I have. No, then, then stop enforcing it. I have no issue with people that are legi- legitimately little people. They're, they're 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 proportionate. Their arms and their legs are proportionate to their body. It's the it's the bobblehead looking ones that we we were talking about. Like, I think it was last week, week before how like when you see maggots, there's this natural revulsion you yeah, feel. Yeah, yeah. That's how I feel about the bobblehead, like the Dinklages. Oh my god. I just this, and I don't want to kill him. I don't. I've, you should be proud of me because I saw one in the wild a couple weeks ago, and I didn't do anything. I didn't even like point them out. I just said, "Let them live their life." <sighs> All I'm saying is, don't kill them. Just put them on an island somewhere. You can call it Lilliput, and they can live their lives as they see fit. Yeah, without me having to see them. Right. That's all. That's it. Not a heightist. That's stop it. saying it. You're yeah. Yeah, you really saved yourself by yes, <laughs> explaining <did>. that. <laughs> You're welcome. You ready to talk the hoagie in the room? Huh? You ready to talk about the hoagie in the room? Are you ready to defend yourself? Because, man, did you light up? Nobody gave a flying fuck about your hot take about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, who because the fuck all they that? were talking about was your motherfucking 
sandwich aversion. It was people were aghast on Twitter. They're like, "What the fuck?" You know, we were gonna have, we're gonna have a guest coming on in a couple weeks. A very special guest we've never had. I've never even spoken to this person. <laughs> That's how special this person is. So everyone's gonna learn about this guy, including us, when we do this episode. But he said he might not do it because of just your because, because of your sandwich thing. I, first of all, I, I I I'm not going to defend your sandwich hating. First of all, but I'm going to defend you. I'm like, what the fuck are you to be making demands, guest? You haven't been on yet. <laughs> but anyway, well, Uber eats him over a sandwich. Defend, I will, uh, defend your s- s- hatred of sandwich. No, 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 no. Yeah. Hey, I don't have You're to defend minority. myself. You're the minority. I would like you to explain to me. What the fuck's so good about Why a fucking sandwich? Why is everything up sandwich? to me? I want you to help. I me. defended my stance on I midgets. Want you to you help defend me your stance on sandwiches. What is it about a sandwich? Why am I supposed to like what, midgets? What is what is going on with sandwiches that I am missing out on? A sandwich, first of all, is the ideal meal because you get all the four basic food groups. In a, in a hand size, you don't even have these utensils. Okay. It's in your hand, Murray. You're covered for the day. Tell me, you can do your basic lunch sandwich, or you can do an ideal sandwich. Which route would you like to take? Your ideal sandwich? I don't have an ideal sandwich. I'm a lover of all kinds of sandwiches. Okay, but I'm just saying, do you want to go the lunchbox sandwich route? Because I want you to explain what about your. Sandwich I love how is so I'm good. supposed to defend Griff. I would like to have this conversation with you. So go along with no. me here. You need to explain yourself, mister. I don't need to explain myself. So what? Bread. What's the problem? You want some basic bitch wheat bread. Great. Any bread. I love it. That's the beauty of sandwiches. You can use any bread. Okay, so what is your idyllic bread? Maybe it's because you're locked into this idea of what a sandwich is, and you don't know the wonders of the sandwich world. We'll talk about Everything between two pieces of bread is a sandwich, Griff. So you can put anything. We'll talk about my new favorite sandwich in a minute here, What Murray. is your new I favorite? I found no, it. Tell it to me now. I want to know why everybody I know thinks why sandwiches them. are so fucking good. Jersey Mike, Subway, Firehouse. I Sub- just explained it. All these sub sandwiches places are opening up, and they're all shit. Dry deli meats, yummy. Or they're slimy deli meats. Oh, that's so fucking good. I love it. Just so you're some judging... Slimy- Sandwiches as a whole, just by fast food restaurants, and I guess all burgers are shit because McDonald's burgers are garbage. It's not even about th- if I go down to my beautiful meat monger and get some deli meats or anything. Same situation. Our deli meats, boring. God, you are basic such basic bullshit for a guy who n- didn't have a strawberry until he was twenty five. You sure are a food snob. What is so good about a fuck iceberg lettuce? Bullshit. Get it out of here. Raw tomatoes taste so like so. Basically, dick. people, Griff's. Had uh, some kind of traumatic experience with a sandwich in his youth. His mom made a shitty sandwich. All sandwiches are garbage now. From my here on ch- out, my child. All kids got parents according to Griff. All sandwiches are made with dry rye bread, slimy meat, and iceberg lettuce, which is total bullshit. I'll go through my whole therapy session here of sandwich lifestyle. I started out with the Subway sandwich, white bread, olives, turkey, vinegar, and oil. And cheese, of course. That was my sandwich. And you know what? I fucking loved it for... Uh, so, because you are awful at making choices, it's the sandwich's fault, not your fault. I never... I even said it on that last episode. I know I'm wrong about sandwiches, but then you you wouldn't even tell me about a sandwich you like. You can't even tell me! A Reuben. About Reuben a sam- is a great sandwich. There we go. There a go. Reuben. Yeah. So you need... I can go for a Reuben right now. You need a beautiful marbled rye. Grilled. You don't want that slimy meat. You want some nice, what is that, corned beef? Uh, yeah. It's with beef the sauerkraut pastrami, yeah. Yeah. and then the Thousand Island sauce. Yeah, it's great. See? Sounds like a great sandwich. Swiss cheese on it? Not for me. Sounds like a great sandwich. That's a Reuben. What I'm arguing about is the idea of cold cut sandwiches are bullshit. And with that, just Well, then being... you need to, see, now we're learning something. You need to specify. Because you just blanketed sandwiches. Right, but you episode. also blanketed it too. You said, "Oh, sandwiches are the greatest. They you can are. take them everywhere. You can do anything they are, with them." They are, yeah. The concept of sandwich is perfect. The Earl of Sandwich. You should. He. For, you know what? Everyone's bitching about Columbus Day. Get rid of it. Make it the Earl of Sandwich Day, and we yeah. can all celebrate sandwiches. I would that love day. that. That would be really cool. Just one last day for a fucking shitty human being would be great, and just make it about sandwiches. I love that idea. So. Yeah, sandwiches, boring, cold cuts, cheese. Don't need any of that what bullshit. What is the ideal meal, Groove? 
The ideal sandwich, the Griff no, sandwich. What's the meal? You don't like sandwiches. What's the ideal meal oh, that that's... everyone should be eating, according to Griff? That's a hard one. Like some of my staples, uh, peppers, onions, chicken. You can go wow. that way with a variety of – you could do like so some kind of curry. You could do – oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Rubin. <laughs> well, I got silver on my meal, so it makes it okay. <laughs> what the fuck is that? You know what? It's a good meal. It's I'm talking nice. about my sandwiches. We'll do a tippy tap where we just argue about food, apparently. <laughs> I don't have issues with food. You're the one that has issues with food. You I, you just shamed me. <laughs> it's as if I told you a little person came and handed me a, sa- you know, a pepper, onion, and chicken Would that situation. make it better if a little person made you the sandwich? <laughs> a little tiny sandwich? <laughs> so, my sandwich... We're done. I love We're how every this. argument with Griff is, you explain yourself, I, and then I'm going to sit back. As the person who's standing as a shiny beacon of sandwiches, I just wanted you to tell me. I'm just wondering, is this – I hate that everything has to boil down to generational things, but is this the fucking – Liquid soap versus bar soap thing with like cause your generation will not touch bar soap. Is this the same thing? You don't touch sandwiches. I mean, the sandwich I, is antiquated. Is it such a boomer thing to eat a sandwich? All I have is bar soap. I mean, come on. Fucking paint me in a soapbox. I don't know what's going on. It's during my life. Get that off your soapbox, awful mister. Awful fucking sand. No, I'm on my soapbox because you're fucking going along for Big Sandwich Corporation. <laughs> I don't get it. All right, there is one sandwich in the world. It's not a Reuben. Fuck that. Sauerkraut's gross. Uh, corned beef kind of sucks. Uh, Swiss is good. Marble rye I like. But the Thousand Islands. See, the dressings. All the sandwich dressings we have, trash. Mayonnaise, garbage. Ketchup, garbage. Mustard, all varieties, garbage. Right now, Mike is per- going, preach! Because he despises I know, condiments. that's right. All them shit. First of all, mustard's great. There's different. Var- there's tons of varieties of mustard, and they're they all, all suck. Great. They're all great. They're all from the mustard seed, which sucks. No, they're great. And then you have our toxic I mean, I don't yellow put mustard. Ke- I, I'm with you. I don't want to put ketchup on a sandwich. Right. But Not even a meatloaf sandwich. I've never had a meatloaf sandwich. I'm sure it's a thing. You put it between two. Well, bread, you're right. I mean, if you put them, I, but then again, that the age old question is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes, clearly. It's I don't between think so. bread, but 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 it's between. No, I don't see. Think I so. like that. It's like, you, is a taco. A you're sandwich. open up the creativity of a sandwich. Is a taco by a saying, sandwich. I, it depends on what grains can be considered bread. Because they're you. If it's a tortilla, yes. But it has not to a be. hard shell. But not a hard shell because it's corn. <sighs> okay. So that's where I go. You 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 open up the creativity of a sandwich. Anything between bread is a sandwich, and then you close it right back down. But because it's technically, it's a bun. It's not bread. <laughs> I got news for you. <laughs> the sandwich. It's got to be two separate pieces of bread. A bun is oh, one okay, piece. Oh, okay, so separate it. You're, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this is our best is, opener ever. You're, li- you're living on that island with the midgets because everybody's on my side on this, this issue. <sighs> I'm just saying, be your, be your, I'm, I'm unique. I'm living outside the box, guy. You're going to be alone. I found my sandwich. Eat your peppers and, and, and chicken. I found my sandwich. I will never be able to make it for myself. I may never find it in this state. But at places that have a nice Vietnamese community, I may be able to find my sandwich. Who's that? The banh mi. Okay. Are you familiar with the banh no, mi? I know what you're talking about. Oh, boy. It's so good. You got that fucking flavorful pork. Not shitty, dried up deli meats. I don't want to say, even though I, this is sounding very anti-Semitic, what Griff is saying, because he hates deli meats, which you all know Jews are the masters of the deli. Oh, I don't know if we can do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm supp- No, I'm, 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 I'm like protecting you. I'm saying he's not saying that. He's not anti-Semitic. Yes. I'm just afraid of using any kind of word that has any kind of toxicity around it. I'm terrified. YouTube's going to kill us. So we'll live on forever well, on well, podcast land. I don't land. think there's the word Jew is toxic. I don't. I, mean, it, I didn't use a. You're slur. right. You, you didn't. You use it in the most appropriate context mm. ever. But yeah. big dog, big daddy YouTube hates us. Yeah. Well, so do the so do our. They're viewers. waiting to go full. Everybody ram- on YouTube hates us. That's where we're hated. They're waiting to go full ramrod on us. Let's say. Okay. But that beautiful. Should we, should we get out? Should we get out of this? Should we get to the positivity of a pimp who beats the okay. shit out of a woman? Just want to say, beautiful seasoned pork. 
You got some cilantro on there. You got jalapeno on there. You've got radish on there. You've got carrot on there. You've got cucumber on a fresh baked bun. Perfect right. sandwich. Maybe you'll come around. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, baby steps. Treat Griff with baby steps. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. get him there. Don't yeah, worry. People. Yeah, yeah. People are worried about you. Well, you're troubled. You're yeah. obviously troubled first. Yeah, I'm definitely troubled. Yeah. All right, Murray. Let's talk about some other troubles. What? The Vice Squad. Oh yeah, Vice Squad. Uh, p- p- great performance. Wow. <laughs> We're from, completely like, off I'm the rails. Because I'm still just like. <laughs> All right. Uh, Let's just take a minute here. Okay. Clearly, this is just a straightforward movie about he, people I'm disgusted by. It's a night by. in the life of the streets. Yes, the street and life, if you very, will. I loved it because it's very gritty. It's very real. It's not like John Wick. I can't get into it. It's this fantasy horse shit. It's bullshit. This is the fuck. This is the, this was life on the streets. Early 80s L.A. Yes. We see everything we've talked about in every other 80s, 70s, 80s L.A., Church, strip club, church, liquor store. We see we the see- hustle, yes. the bustle, the chrome and the steel. We got pimps, we got prostitutes, we got Johns, we got Janes. We got them all. I never. You wrote that. Uh, what is a Jane to you? I never heard the term Jane. What does I that mean? Janes were supposed to be like the prostitutes when they didn't have a name. I thought it was hoes. You can call them that, but I I've thought never when the police anyone interacted used... with them, they called them Jane. I've, Jane no, does. I, I don't know. I, I've never heard. Or is that, that only when they're dead? Uh, yeah, you're a Jane Doe. Like that's the female version of a John Doe. Yeah. Okay, but I thought that's just how they easily. No. I I was having trouble. There's a lot of people in this movie. There's a lot of names to catch, and it's like, do any of these names matter? Hoes, street trash, prostitutes, hookers, whatever. We're gonna be disagreeing here because I don't get prostitutes in this movie. On one hand, they make their living off these people, yeah. and at the same time. I guess it's like customer service where, you know, everybody frustrates you. But there's got to be cool. You have well, cool customers, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't like them. You don't uh, like them, but you you get uh, along with them. You're like, yeah, yeah fuck. Okay. I mean, no. I don't think anyone grows up with the idea, I want to be a streetwalker. So you're going to – you're it's not people – I mean, obviously, Princess, the character in this movie, this isn't her ideal situation. She's right. – I have to do this. I'm trying to get out of this life. Street life, the only in life she knows, but Thank she you. wants to know another life. She does. She's, and it's not walking the streets. She's got the nice house in the suburbs and everything. She's I don't know. Maybe, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of sex workers say they love it. I don't know. Maybe you do. I don't know. I just don't think it's a life most people want to live. Yeah, I could see that. It, but it's also because. I mean, it's a very, I understand falling in love with the easy money. It's a very easy way to make a lot of money. Right. But I don't think, I think at the end of the day, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's. I, I think at the end of the day, people want intimacy with the person they're having sex. I with. agree that there's there's got to be some kind of connection, but then again, I think a lot of people do like if it weren't so underground. I think that's where it comes in the stigma with prostitution. Well, no, I think prostitution should be legal. I mean, it's yeah. I think we like we were talking about earlier. I think there would be a lot less uh, mass shootings. Yeah, if people who have no game can get laid. Oh yeah. So, yeah, but I think even those people at the end of the day, I think, would want some intimacy, too. Right. We which you're not to... going to get. Because, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a situation in this movie where I think that John had a point, which we'll get into. Yes. I'm really inter- – there's going to be but, a lot of good conversations to be had in this movie. Yeah, and... because the name of the uh, – we've been talking a lot about Pussy Fog. We'll just call it The Fog for YouTube reasons. This movie's about cock smog, which I've, I've, we've alluded to. We've never really got. We're going to get into cock smog in this movie because yeah. it's about men using their sexuality to control a situation or using their minds to control women. Yes. Okay. Because as uh, we'll give you a big a primer. If you really want to go into it with this, the fog, I always say go to our Excalibur episode for a little taste. If you really want to go deep dive, you go to Violent City episodes. That's right. So we, we've been talking about it, and, and I'm glad we're talking about it because I don't want the show to turn in – with all this fog talk, I don't want the show to turn into a Jordan Peterson type situation. Yeah. That's not what this is about. I don't want that energy, first of all. This right. isn't a show for incels. I'm not – I'm just – when I talk about pussy fuck, I'm just explaining the situation. I don't. I'm not angry about it. Okay, I'm just explaining this. There's certain people that use it. There's certain people that don't. 
Because we've, we've explained it. There's the Uther fog, which is from Excalibur. There's the Jeff fog, which is from uh, Wild Violet City. City. So the female version of the Jeff, because the Jeff fog is more about emotions. Yes. Uther fog is about lust. It might, the person who's emitting the fog might not be aware of it, and they're not, they're not to blame for it. Okay? Yes. So I, for the purposes of this move, the, the female, the Jeff version of cock smog will be called Ginger Fog. Because there's a character named Ginger who's deep in the cock smog right. in this movie. Right, right. I don't know what we'll call I, I'm sure eventually we'll, we'll find the female version of Uther Fog. I think it's rut rarer than the, the, the male version. I don't think it ever really gets represented in movies outside no. of maybe horror movies. Because some of those ladies in horror movies want to fuck. Yeah. And that's the Uther Fog. But we rarely see that because usually 80s, 70s, all those movies were geared towards well, you dudes. Don't, you don't really so the think because uh, I mean I think we've we talked about it in the Uther fog. Uther, I, I guess I'm just, we'll cut to the chase. You don't the Uther fog as in, in terms of the Excalibur it was about a man who saw a beautiful woman. Yes, was enraptured in the pussy fog. She had nothing. To, her only crime was being an attractive woman. She was not leading him on in any way or manipulating. No. Him. So, but it is still he's you lose your fucking mind. Like Uther lost his mind in her pussy fog that she was admitting unknowingly. Yes. Now, the Jeff fog. He was being clearly manipulated by a woman. Using your pussy, right? So I don't know. I'm like I'm in the fog now. I don't know where I'm going anymore. I know well, we're gonna we're gonna get into it. Ramrod, the character of Ramrod, he is a master of crack smog. He is he knows how to control and all these pimps, all pimps do. We see some pimps use it a lot better, but yes, we don't get a lot of others. time with them. We get a lot of time with Ramrod. And like you said, we do get to see Ramrod just fucking master reeling it in and out. And and when he can't and when he can't do it, he gets frustrated and loses control. Yes, because there is a woman, the star, the the the, the heroine of this. She's totally uh, immune to his cock smog, and yes. it pisses him off. Yes, and so we get to see what kind of rapture he's going to unleash when somebody resists it. Right. So why don't we just get into it? The f- bang bang, talking about crime. Everybody's swimming in the neon slime of this trailer for Vice Squad. Newspapers only print it. Television can only record it. Now, one motion picture lets you experience it as it's never been shown before. Go. The Hollywood Vice Squad. The real story. Now playing at a theater near you. All right, everybody. Action is back on the menu. And just like you heard to open this episode, we got Wings singing us to open this movie. He's basically letting us know what we're in for. Right. That neon slime that we're seeing. We're seeing... While we're seeing that, we're getting a montage of the neon slime of L.A. It's a fucking hellhole. It's like a goddamn Tom Waits song. Just painting a picture. Wings is killing The hustle, here. the bustle, the chrome and the steel. You we're know, seeing it all. When I was hearing this, I was just like, fuck, I want Wings to do some covers of like Motorhead songs or something. He's got that gritty voice and everything. If they had done a Wings version of a Motorhead cover in Phenomena, it would totally made sense. It would have made great I sense. got it. It threw me off in Phenomena. <laughs> but it makes sense, yeah. So we're, we're seeing the street walk. I, oh, there was one that had a great look. She had the leg warmers. with. Those. I love those 70 shorts where they're like cut up on the side. I don't know what that's called. Yes, yes, yes. She looked – well, she, yeah, her face was actually kind of busted, but her body looked great. <laughs> I was liking that. But, yeah, we're seeing that just nasty – like it's a Black Flag song come to life. It's just gross right. L.A. Gross L.A. Uh, and then we cut over to just a nice little homely situation. We got – Well, not ho- – homely means ugly. Oh. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. We uh, did see a homely situation with that girl. Yeah, yeah. Great body. <laughs> put a bag on it. But, yeah, we're at nice. We're at nice. You say great body. Put a bag on it as if you want her to put a bag on her body. You no, put a bag her, on her, her head. head. Yeah, I'm head. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to be call a, that a I don't want to. Off, face. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to offend, but cover it up. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yes, we're, we're like in this nice all-American suburb. Yeah. Of course it is. Seeing uh, our heroine of this movie 
Princess. We never get a real name. We get a street name. We just princess, get a street name. Played by Susan Hubley, who at the time was going through a really bad divorce with Kurt Russell. Oh, interesting. She I actually thought... has a small part in Escape from New York, where when when, when uh, Snake first arrives and he's hiding in a chuck full of nuts because the cannibals are coming up from the 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 uh, sewers. He 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 meets her. That's that was his wife at the time. She's a character that's like wants him to take take her out, and then the cannibals come up to the floor and they drag her down. Yeah, okay. Here's a nice little Easter egg for any Escape from New York fans, because in the novelization, which I have, the reason why Hulk, Hulk uh, Lee Van Cleef's character, is the warden of the, the prison is because his son is in, he's like serving time in Manhattan. Oh. And so he goes to Snake and goes, look, I want you to find my son for me. He has, he has a specific tattoo, you'll know. Can you find him for me? Snake's like, yeah, whatever. And then in the book, you don't see this in the movie. In the book, he it turns out his son becomes one of those crazy cannibals. Oh. And Snake kills him, like a mercy killing, because he notices the tattoo. Right. And he's like, this guy's too far gone. He's not, he can't, he can, no way can he go back to society. So he kills him. Oh, okay. Good for so, you, Snake. So, yeah. Anyways, we got Princess, and again, that's her street name. We don't yeah. get a real name. And she's got a daughter, beautiful little girl. Little Lisa. Who, by yep. the way, what was up with the fucking voiceover for her? The the, the, the yeah. Peter Bark fucking voiceover? Apparently they... I love you. It's clearly like a grown woman doing a <laughs> child I was voice. Say, apparently Italian director, secondhand yeah. director did this one, and they didn't do audio because, yeah, they just pipe in some adult doing a child's <laughs> voice, and it's like, yeah. whoa, where'd that come from? Yeah, this kid was such a bad... Why would this kid picked as such a bad actress? She can't do I love you, mommy. Right. But we're juxtaposed with a with a situation where it's like we saw all the street life, and now we're cutting over to this mom just getting her daughter ready for school or something. No, she's getting ready to get out of the life. This is like her last night on the street. She's going to San Diego to do it to turn her life around. We're, we're building this up though, so we don't know. We just think that she's a good mom sending her daughter away to school, and then Beatrice shows up. Yeah, and they're wearing the same shirt. So I was like, oh, she works with Beatrice somewhere at the Red Roof Inn or something. And no, we're we're learning that. Beatrice is actually going to be taking little Lisa to San Diego onto a bus to San Diego. Right. And now we start to see that, yeah, Princess is going to be whoring herself up. Right. She's got one. This is is like the the, uh, cop who's got two weeks before he retires. This is her one last night on the streets. Yeah, for a cop movie, it's kind of cool because we're seeing it reverse where the prostitute's like. And we forgot to mention there was a little like. Call right out, like saying, like this is we we work like the, the makers of the film. We work with law enforcement to give you a true like version oh, of what the yeah, streets. Yeah, are. yeah. I just skipped right over that. Yeah. I was like, "Fuck no, you didn't." Uh, while they're getting ready, uh, Princess does get a frantic call from her friend Ginger. Her friend Ginger, played by Nina Blackwood, who was one of the original MTV VJs. Oh, interesting. And and she's just like, I, I finally escaped from Ramrod. Can, I'm scared shitless. I'm at the hotel. I, she, uh, can you please come and save me? Like, right. Help me out. And she's like, she knows Ramrod, princess. She's like, lock that fucking door. Don't yep. let anybody in. I will I will, I will. come see you. I got to do a few tricks on my right. way there, but I will right. slowly make my way over there. And like you said, she whores herself up in the bathroom. Yeah, they go to the, they go to the bus station. She sees little Lisa off. Yep. I love you, mom. <laughs> and then she gets in there. And then she goes because she's dressed conservatively, and then she goes into the bath, the, the bus station bathroom, hoards herself up, puts on. She actually kind of concerned. She wasn't really that hoard up in her horror costume. No, no, she she like teases her she hair a, a little dress. bit. She has short hair. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't. Feeling, she was too androgynous looking for me. I wasn't feeling her. Hey, but, she goes for yeah. the high class businessman, and she was getting them. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah so she. I mean, she did have the stockings to like. That was yes. good. But yeah, she had. For a whore, she had a conservative kind of dress. So, right. And yeah. we're thinking, this is a soft lady. I mean, come on. She's dressed for the, you know, high end, high fluting. Right. I bought a Ferrari because I have a tiny dick type of people. Right. But then why are you street walking if you, that's your clientele? I know, right? Yeah. And so we see that she's. She kind of, she probably, in a little sick way, kind of enjoys this kind of life. You right? Know, she so. does because clearly she's good at it. She walks out and there's a pimp there getting a shoe shined, yeah. starts talking shit. Babe, well, why don't you come well, under me? That's the hangout for a pimp, the bus station, because the girls come to LA looking to become movie stars. Exactly. So, yeah. I can make you a star. Or you right. just got to turn a few tricks for me real quick. Right. 
And so this pimp starts yelling out to her, and she is just handing it right back to me, just right. shoving it right down his throat. Because that's how you got to handle these motherfuckers. That's and right. And it shuts him up. So we follow her outside, and there's a car. There's a John waiting Soon for her Soon as she right walks there. out of the bus station, yes. the car pulls up. It's like when you go to the airport, and the taxis are just lined up waiting to yeah. pick people up. There is just cars of John just <laughs> waiting to pick up some ladies, you right. know? They're just like, yep, we know they hang out. The guy's <laughs> like, hey, baby, I just got paid. I'm ready to party. Oh, uh, yeah? You just got paid? Yeah, my payola. And she recognizes that awful slang. <laughs> yeah, you're a cop. Do I look like a cop? What well, you're listening to uh, 91.2 Jazz FM. You're a cop. She knows her cops. And then, lo and behold, it is a cop. She, of course. She spotted that guy a mile away. So our next John pulls up, and he's like, Hey, ma'am, I do have $50. I thought maybe I could. What What do you have to offer for $50? Was this the guy with the little hat? No, this, this was like just a, like an is, old guy. He was like a businessman it? type guy. He was in a convertible. He looks like one of those old, uh, I don't remember what era it would have been, maybe like the 40s or something. Colonel Sanders looking motherfucker. He had like the white suit on, yeah. and he had white hair. He's an old dude, and yeah. He's like, what can I get for 50 bucks? Well, you can get half and half, straight, head, skim, full, fat, milk. What's a half and half, by the way? Well, they explained that. You, were, yes, you, that's right. They did. Half and half is fucking suck. Oh, you got to uh, pay extra for that, I bet. And then he's like, well, are you into the, the uh, tinkly sound of a golden shower? Excuse me? What is a golden shower? Well, she knows what a golden of shower is. Of course she is. does. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm all pissed out today. Yeah, she's like... I'm not. I, she's like, I just took a shower. I don't need another one. And he's like, How would a Mr. Benjamin Franklin do? Ooh. And a six pack. He pulls out a six pack. She's like, We can rehydrate you, baby. You got yourself a date, buddy. You can call me Princess Running Water. <laughs> See, this was back in the day, Griff. Just for a hundred bucks, you could piss in a woman's face. Now it's at least two hundred. Inflation. Uh, Thanks, you got, Brandon. You got, you, got, you got that backwards. Thanks, Brandon. Because. The guy's going to get pissed on. No, he wants to piss on her. That's why she was like, I already took a shower. No, no, no. You got it backwards, friend. No, I don't. She said, I've already pissed today. That's why she said, you can call me Princess Running Water. He wants her to piss on him. Oh, that's what, so what, yeah. what, then what would it cost to piss on her? I don't think she will go for that. Because she was refusing to do it at first because she's like, eh, that's a little too weird for me. But 100 bucks, yeah, she'll piss on him. That's why she's Princess Running Water. Okay. Yeah, you got, yeah it's all right. You want to get well, into You know more about golden showers than I do. I know that. It's yes, that's, that's it. I know more about golden showers <laughs> yeah. so I can hear clearly this no. instance. <laughs> no. We're not going to get into you yes, hearing clearly. Yes, we won't. Clear. We, won't. we won't get I, into you hearing clearly. Yeah, I, I know, because. I know. But in this instance, hey, I'm going to well, I know. Yours perk up when you hear golden shower because that's what you're that's, about. That, that's yeah. it. All uh, about golden showers. Yeah. Everything in my house is just in a fog of piss. This is Griff. This is Griff. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Ramrod, the reason we're watching this movie Wings Hauser in his fucking Bronco driving around. He, he he's going full cowboy pimp, right? He's like he's in, he's he obviously must have grown up in Texas or somewhere. We went to the big city and he found his calling, pimp right. and hose. And Wings Hauser himself, yeah, he's just he plays a cowboy pimp so well. We've seen it in Hunter, our right. Tippy Tap episode from like a month or two back. Right. So you know he's gonna chew the fuck out of this scenery. Right, and he's got the fucking, he doesn't have, he's not big enough pimp that he has a vanity place as Ramrod, but he does have the the fucking spare tire cover that says Ramrod. Oh, yeah. So he's going around, he's got a lady in his car, he's dropping her off, Bronco, I believe. Yeah, it's a Bronco. Classic. He's looking for fucking Ginger. She ran out on him. Right. He knows where she's at. We just hear the lady he drops off, the prostitute, say, yep, room 109, just down the street. So he thanks her, and he takes off. 
Heads in there. He starts. He starts with the. You see, Ginger's like hiding behind the door. He sees this some fucking smog, this billow underneath the door. Oh my like god! Like Dracula, right? She's just trying to, you know, relax, stay undercover, stay discreet. She's painting her toenails, and then slowly it seeps under that door. And he's he's in full fucking cowboy regalia. He's got the fucking blazer with like the leather shoulders. And yeah, cowboy hat, and he's like, "Baby, open the door." He's just just slightly scratching on it, like. Tickling the door as if I'm going to come in there and tickle your back. I'm going to make everything right. No, Ramrod. Baby, I just want to love you. I want to love you. I give you the love that you need. You know that I only get so angry because my emotions are so strong for you. I love you too much, baby. You got to open the door. You're like a 80-yard Hail Mary touchdown pass in my life. Texans love football. You're not going to hurt me. Baby, you're hurting me because I got to be with you. I'm hurting you? Don't you hear the quiver in my voice? I'm deteriorating. And then she's like, oh, Ramrod. The fuck? She's full in the smog, dude. Yep. She's coughing a little. That smog's rough. <laughs> and then she opens the door. Boom! Kicks the door in. <laughs> Immediately she's gets like, her by you, the throat. I can't believe how stupid you are. He pins her to the door with it you know by the throat he's just like i can't believe how dumb you are you think i can ever love somebody as dumb as you fuck you're a hoo throws her on the bed rips her stockings off ties her to the bed he has in an incredible ability to somehow strap up a bed for some weird kink shit yeah you know well he's got a he's got a fuck palace what we'll see later in in the movie he knows what he's doing but the fact that he is able to equip this bed for strapping a woman down just like that right unless this is just where ginger normally works out of immediately makes a beeline for the closet pulls out a wire hanger as he's talking, he's he's done this before. He's he's fashioning his pimp stick. So yes. he's like folding it, making the perfect pimp stick. Right. And then he gives a whole new meaning of the word pussy whipped. He starts beating her pussy with the fucking pimp stick. Jesus Christ. You're going to be working very soon for me again, girl, but tonight you're going to be dining in the hospital. You're going to be sitting on some on an ice cube. Anyways, we're going over to our Vice Squad leaders. Well, our leaders for this movie. Tom Walsh and his rookie partner, Ed, with the really fucked up cornrows. And we have (laughs) even points it out. He's got the Bo Derrick cornrows with the beads in it. (laughs) Yeah. And looking like Leroy from Fame. And he's just like, he's like, what the fuck is up with those cornrows? You don't like my cornrows? Right. Racist cop? What the fuck? Yeah, this was, okay, I just so happened to get Hellbound ready to go up today. Yeah. Our Chuck Norris with his black uh, co-star in that movie. And same idea there, where it's just like, awkward white guy with, uh, a guy probably didn't have much of an acting career after so, this. <laughs> I don't think either of them did. Well, uh, I don't think anyone but fucking Wings had a fucking acting career after this. That's a good point. So Ed is getting welcomed to the whole street beat. Yeah, because it's his first day on the Vice Squad. Right. And he's got to learn the lingo of the street, Murray. He's got to learn about the half and half. Which is sh- fucking suck. We yeah. Tom is explaining. as Half and half? Suck. And fuck. That's like the surf and turf. You know, you right. get a little... You get the your surf dick and wet, surf you get your mouth wet. Of the, st- of the street game is... Is half and half. half. And half. Uh, straight. He figures that one out pretty quickly. Head. Um, but then they hit on Golden Shower. And he's like, oh, what's that? Is that like Scrooge McDuck? You throw coins at each other? It's like, oh, baby boy. S- slaps him a little on the cheek like Kojak. No. It's like getting pissed on. Yeah. You uh. mean people get off when they pay for that shit? Oh, they pay. They pay a lot. So, again, he's got to harden this kid for the streets. So he's telling him, he's like, don't mind all these freaks, these guys, these homosexuals that are out here, use a stronger word. Like, yeah. He's like, all these people are freaks and disgusting. Well, we're not handing out citations, buddy. We're cleaning the filth. The knee, we're getting the neon slime off the street. That's right. As they say that, some neon slime just happens to be walking down the street. Right, yeah. And this is this is where Ed is going to get thrown into the fire. Ed is, you know, he's, he's, he can't wait. He's like, can I do it? Can I do it? I've been working on my Jamaican accent. I've been watching the Steven Seagal movies. I learned everything about Jamaican accents from Sensei Seagal. And he's like, baby boy, I'm going to let you do it. So he goes up to, uh, what's your name? Blue, Blue Chip. Chip. Great name. Great name. And he, 
it works that you make. Well, she and she calls out as Jamaican accent, right? She's like, "Motherfucker, yeah, I bet I've seen that Seagal movie <laughs> enough. What do you want?" And he doesn't even get an offer out of her, and Tom just moves in and cuffs the bitch. Right, it's all he needed. I can qu- like actually call her a bitch, right? Isn't that the preferred prostitute yes, language? Yeah, that's the nom- nomenclature yeah. for uh, uh, a I'm not. Walker. I'm not bitch, trying to offend her. Oh, yeah, slut whore. You know, we learn that you don't call them whores in this next scene. That's right. Because we got it. Come on, this is a cop movie. We got to have seen them running in the hose. You had to love this because you love every time we go back to the precinct and there's just fucking prostitutes walking That's all, that's all it is. <laughs> there's one crawling up the ceiling, turning her head around backwards. Right. It's all kinds of whores. We got junkie whores. We got whores that got their head on straight. We got them all. And it's anarchy in here. Yelling. Excuse me, they're not whores because it's uh, one prostitute was, i am a prostitute and the guy's like what's the fucking difference and they go because whores don't get paid for it boom bitch and again yelling screaming fighting resisting and then we see that even the cops aren't uh, uh uh completely immune to the high stakes here i wanted more of this cop i wanted more of him too because he comes out of the office and you think he's upset about like his partner dying or something huge black guy who stole my goddamn paper clips? That was that's that's all that's his rage for right. paper clips. You think it would have but been But that's a- what happens, dude, because you know it didn't start here. It's been building. Yes. People have been stealing his paper clips for months now. Yeah. And it finally comes to a head. And he's probably asked nicely. He's like, Look, people, yeah. I bring my paper clips from home. I don't fuck with other people's shit. I don't grift people's desks. That's right. I bring my own paper clips and they are my paper clips. Leave them alone, please. Thanks to those fucking liberals defunding the police, he has to bring his own paper clips. That's where it home. starts. When they defund yep. the police, they start with the paper they clips. They st- always start with the paper clips and that's why all these cases are going unsolved because the papers right. are just flying around. Exactly. Fucking Christ, America, wake up. Tom brings in blue chip Cop comes up. Hey, uh, we got uh, we got uh, that 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 hooker you were looking for, Ginger. She's at the hospital. Go check Shit. her out. So we immediately cut over Ginger. All fucked up. Severe pussy trauma. The guy who says like vaginal trauma. Yeah, we have the doctor. So we know- learned because we didn't know what was going on. Yeah, and we like, oh, he beat her pussy into submission with a wire hanger. Have you heard of the uh, Uther fog? It's much different from that. This is the Charlie Bronson fog. I forget what his name was in that movie, Violent City. But it's much akin Jeff. Jeff fog. You see, she is so infatuated <laughs> with her pimp. She thanked him for beating her pussy. All she's been saying in there is, Ramrod, ram me with your rod. That's all she can say. And that's the man who abused her. Uh, we can see that Tom is no stranger to Ginger. He cares about Ginger. He want, He probably was the one who put her up in that hotel to get her off the street. Yeah. And he's like, Ramrod did this to you? He's that sick fuck. No, he's not sick. He loves me. Duh. She immediately dies after that. <laughs> <laughs> she does say, I don't want to die. And he's just like, too late. <laughs> You're dead. So another cop goes, yo, we, we found it. Uh, obviously, the Ginger and Princess are like friends They on the street. They know each other. Yeah. Like, we got Princess off the street. We got her down at the station. Fucking douchebag Tom's like, no, bring her here. Yeah, bring her all the way to me. I'm not driving back there. So she arrives at the, at the hospital, and they're just standing in like a room with a couple corpses in it. <laughs> yeah, it's a hallway. Yeah, it's like a, it was a hallway. You're yeah. right. And he's like, look, we got to get Ramrod off the street. She's like, look. This is my last night on the streets. I'm out of here. I'm not getting involved. You think you're not going to help me out here tonight, Missy? You're a fucking street whore. You're a goddamn worm. You're going to help me not out. Not only that, I got a drug bus hanging over you. She's like, come on, man. You know I was holding for Ginger. That ain't my shit. I don't give a fuck. The judge don't give a fuck. That's right. You're going to help me get this fucking ramrod. No, I will not go near him. He's a psychopath. <laughs> I'm not getting murdered today. Well, I do know that you have a daughter, and I could go ahead and get you locked up, and your daughter will be right on the street. Yeah, by the time you get out, yeah. that sweet little Lisa, she'll be sucking. She'll be fucking doing half and halves for <laughs> half the money you make. <laughs> and she's still like, I don't give a shit. I'm out of here. I've got eight more hours on my shift, and I am done. San Diego, here I come. 
And he's like, well, uh, maybe I can show you what's going to happen if you don't. So, yeah, Princess turns her back to him. He grabs her by the back of her head and shoves her face into (laughs) Ginger's dead body. You want this? You fucking want this life? You're going to help me fucking get Ramrod. And she's and then she just loses it because she just saw her best friend's dead. She just talked to her like a few hours ago. Right. And she's like, You motherfucker, fuck you. Fuck he's like, like he's like he goes to like Ed, his partner, get this woman out of here, calm her down. She's being hysterical. <laughs> get her horn up again and send her to that fucking bar up. down the street. Right. Well we know Rambog. Rambog <laughs> Ramrod. That's, that's his, his goblin name. <laughs> Rambog. Ramfog. <laughs> he does have the Ramfog. Fog rod. And so, yeah, send her to the bar that we know Ramrod hangs out at. It's like a strip club slash bar. Oh, yeah. The pimps love hanging out here. Yeah. This looks like the exact bar that I, Hunter's pimp yeah, walked into. I think Jimmy Bob, whatever the fuck his name was, he just came through there beating the shit out of some. Right. It, it, the mirror image of Ramrod. They're almost they're two sides of the same coin. That's right. So we walk into this bar. There's, of course, this pimp, Silky, and he's just like, Ooh, girl, you got that high-class ass. I need to take you. You need to get under my thumb. I'll, I got all kinds of great clientele. She just breezes right by him, just cool, calm, collects, like a, like a black Caesar tomato. She keeps it together. Right. Ramrod, who's cleaned himself up. Now he's got like a baby blue country and western shirt on. Yeah, with nice... Teal sequins or no silvery sequins going over yeah. it. It's like let me show you no fringe sequins. Right, though. he goes to Silky. Let me show you how the master does it. Right, oh, this cock fog just fucking flutters. He's, he's off. starting to. He's stir- like Dracula. He becomes some cock fog and just goes yeah, whoop, right yeah. up to her. So he's gonna start working his way, but we're gonna go outside. <laughs> His way he works here is so great. It's hilarious, man. We go outside real quick just to see that Ed and Tom, they've got the tape recorder. They got, this, they got the gigantic Columbo tape recorder. Yes. Like It's like a Kinja Tache case with all this like, they recording can't, equipment. Like, there's wires coming out of the trunk because There's a thing- wire running from the cart to Princess. <laughs> well, they didn't have wireless mics back then, so it makes sense, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this whole fucking thing, it's like a giant 60s computer in their trunk trunk of their car. <laughs> yeah. so Ram- old- <laughs> Ramrod drifts up to Princess. <laughs> he starts talking to her. He puts his fingers in her mouth and shit. He's just like, oh, my God. He's just like, oh, baby, I, you, you can make me some money, baby. And, and like, then after he sticks his fingers in her mouth, then he grabs her face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is some great Wings house because you know none of his shit is in the script. Obviously, this is Wings winging it. He's got a bullet, the drink in his hand. He's drinking it. Yeah, you like he's, that? He's like, okay, right. How do you feel about a man's breath in your mouth? Get you out on this. You want to suck my fingers, right? right? Okay. Yeah, let me get a little bullet on these fingers for you. And she's like, I don't need it. But who gives a fuck? Oh, and you know she likes being told. No. You know she likes to be silenced because she deals with the worms. She deals right. with the simps yeah. to have a man in front of her. Exactly. Yes, a real conservative who tells a woman her place is the kitchen. She loves it. Right. And he's just like, you're going to come home with me, all right? You like that, don't you, bitch? And she's slapping her in the <laughs> face. You're going to come home with me. And she's loving it. Yep. Well, she's not. She's playing along because she's working with the cops, obviously. Because she's straight outlaw. She don't need a pimp. That's right. We learned that she's straight. Is that where we learned she was straight out? No, it's no, later there. we learned she's straight. Okay. So he takes like, my Bronco awaits, my lady. Right? Oh, yeah. Parked illegally on the sidewalk right in front. She, of course. He yeah. does what he wants. He's, <laughs> right. He's the outlaw. Right. And so as we're walking outside, he's escorting her. He's going to open the door. Don't tell me Chivalry's not dead. I mean, come on. Even the pimp opens the door for the lady. Bag lady rolls up. Don't go with him. He's uh, he's scum. He's neon slime. And clearly another improvisation from Wingshauser here. He just pulls out his Zippo, lights it in fucking an inch from her nose. You want me to burn you? I'm the devil, baby. (laughs) You want to burn? They hop in the car, they put it in third gear, and just fire down the road. And we see Tom, of course, he's got all kinds of men stationed. He's even got fucking... Yeah, they're like... I, I find it hard to believe they have this many men just to get one pimp yeah. 
For one hoe, they got killed. I don't think they're going to leave half the fucking squad is like on this one case. They don't even know that he killed her, but he's their lead suspect. They're going to go at her. They're throwing all the fucking chips at him, too. So they got Stavros hidden as custodian in the fucking apartment complex <laughs> yeah. he lives in and everything. He's down there sweeping up, getting, you know, taking tabs on everything going on there. And so. So they go in there in the parking garage, and he's like, Princess. I can work. They call you Princess. I can work with that. I like that. Because he's all about branding. That's yeah. why he's a great pimp. I mean, literally, brand. He brands women, but he also is about branding. And he's like, I can work with that. Let's meet, let's go up. Let's discuss over some some J and B uh, whiskey up in my apartment. <laughs> so they go to his apartment. Tastefully done Elvis picture frame frame. Yeah. You know you got style when you frame it, all right? right? And he's got frame pictures of Elvis, fat Elvis, skinny Elvis, all kinds. He of doesn't Elvis. all the permutations of Elvis. A good pimp does not discriminate no. because he knows. Uh, like men, pref- like they're women in many different flavors. Unlike what G- Jordan Peterson says, what does he say? Well, he says that that's not beautiful when you're slightly overweight. Oh, okay. I, I, I prefer it. But so he, uh, yeah, he's like, let me get you that J and B, baby. Just relax. Do you want a double? I don't have enough for a bullet, but I could get you a double. Puts on some fucking Hank Williams Jr. Of course. He goes for the junior. You got it. Both Cephas, dude. Yeah, there we go. And she's kind of like talking to him, and she's, you know. She hits him with a question, just like, oh, how do you get around? Like, what, what's your style of uh, pimping? Because they're talking shop. Of course they are. Well, she's like, where's your main lady at? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I don't have one. She got lazy on me, baby. I had to fire her. You're, you're right now. You're the apple of my eye right now, baby. So he walks up, and we we've known this from the bar scene. Just met her, very handsy, very fingery with her, <laughs> and now he's gonna take her by. Well, he yeah he what he does is he baby birds her. Yes. He takes a swig of that J and B, grabs her by the hair, pulls her head back, opens her mouth, and just blah, like spits the J and B into her mouth. Right, that is called baby birding. <laughs> I, I'm surprised Murray knows that because he yeah. does not drink. Yeah. <laughs> I paid I paid a hundred dollars for that. <laughs> yeah, of course, you yeah. Have. Uh, I, get the but, pe- I get the peach schnapps, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> you and your peaches. <laughs> I can't imagine what a night of coitus with Tim Murray looks like. Peach court, peach pits all over the all bed. over the place. Just, it's very sticky. I'll just just a lot of that chewing much. and spitting. Yeah. <laughs> if you are you into peach play, baby? <laughs> All right, so he's laying Princess down now, right. and he's talking he's to th- her. He's get, well, he, he likes the, her mind. Now he's got he's to sample the body to make right. sure it's, it's working right. Right. You know? A good drug dealer always tests the merch. Right. And you never Little get gummy. high. You never, gummy. Yeah, you never get high on your own supply, but you do a gummy, and he's about to do a Does gummy. He just, so he like puts his hand down in her underwear, then does a gummy, like That's rubs it. it on his gums. He's got to get her warmed up first, Takes and then he's gonna yeah. he's gonna get a gummy. There. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm not happy with that. All right, uh, but you yeah. two probably isn't either. Right, so now he's gonna start unbuttoning her. He's noticing she's wearing the stockings and everything. He's yeah. like, I like that. Yeah, right, well, and keep him on. He's doing all the talking, so he's like, "Oh, come on, babe, play with me here." And we play we, for me, baby. We go down and we see that the cops they're listening in, and they're like, "All right, everybody, we know which room he's in. Just go stand out there and wait for me to give you the word." And just when uh, Ramrod's about to round second base, <laughs> ram his rod. <laughs> yeah, he's about to take his namesake to, into action here and really ram that rod. The cops bust in on him. Yeah, rest in time. And he's cool about it, you know. He's like, I'm not, I'm, I'm going on peacefully. You know? We've learned this. I think Princess said, it, like, well, first he says, like, you got a warrant, which he, he's right. Yeah, and they're like, no, we don't need a warrant. Right. This is uh, breaking and entering. Police can do it. It's all, it's all legal. In the eyes of the law, pr- police can do this right. and murder people. That's fine too. Right. Uh, but as Princess told us before, you can't fucking stop Ramrod. You're gonna. Cuff him today, and it'll be out in five hours. Well, no, she's. I no, I think the opposite. I think she thinks finally we got him. So oh, she no, has no, to. I, no, yeah. I meant before. Yeah, right. But yeah. she's got to rub it in because she's pissed off about Ginger. She thinks they finally caught him because of the recording that she has right. here. So she's got to let Ramrod because Ramrod doesn't know what's going on because he, he he doesn't know Ginger's dead. He just right. beat the shit. He's used to beating the shit. He's out. bragging. I'll be out in five hours. Everybody in this room knows it. You got no warrant. You got nothing on me. Right. And Ginger says, oh, yeah, 
we got something on you, big guy. You remember Ginger? But do they? He didn't say he killed he Ginger. He didn't say, like, anything. <laughs> All he did was, like, talk dirty to her and <laughs> ask her to talk dirty back to him. Yeah. Asked her he, how well, she he, felt all, about all he said that would maybe incriminate him is I fired my main lady, which I guess would be Ginger. That yeah, that is dangerous territory, but it's not inculpatory. Exculpatory. I mean, you can't do anything with that fucking evidence. Yeah. The, the the worst thing they have on him because it was legal, uh, illegal at the time. Maybe was the peach play line because she pulls out the recorder and says, "We got you." Maybe he was offended that she was he, that he was invading her privacy. He's like, "I trusted you." Oh no, he's definitely a fucking one A type guy. He thinks that's offending his first amendment of course but right. no one stopped him from talking they just recorded him talking so wings just goes full <laughs> fucking enraged here right. he grabs her and she's a tiny woman so yeah. he just fucking throws her over his shoulder caveman style. no he uses her as a shield because the cops pull the gun right and he runs over to the corner of his uh, apartment <laughs> grabs a stool <laughs> This is totally Wings' house. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And this is why we yeah. were talking to Mike. I didn't know Mike was a Wings fan, but Mike's like, <laughs> you have to – yeah. People haven't seen him yet. Yeah. They don't know it. They're Wings yeah. fans, though. Yeah. He grabs that fucking stool and bonks her on the head <laughs> while holding her still. He's beating her in the right. face. Now, I, I'm sure the director was just like, you're going to throw it at the cops. He's like, no, I'm going to do it one better. I'm going to hit her in the fucking face with his stool and then throw it. Incre- and this looked like our fucking Dale Earnhardt Jr. fucking table stool. <laughs> Heavy as shit. Yeah. But Wings is so caught up in the moment where it's like, I can't go to prison. Yeah. So he has that adrenaline rush right. and he's able. Because the f- only gummy he's got is her her pussy right. so he's not <laughs> high and then finally the cops dog pile him and they get him under control she even even princess is on top throwing punches at his fucking dick. motherfucker hit me with a stool yeah, that was is- probably that was probably fucking season hubbly pissed off that she did because she know you know she didn't see that coming right this is like old yeah. school fucking hockey shit here right. this is bad boys era basketball right. like yeah. everybody's getting elbows in the, the hansen brothers came in or the there hansen- we go yeah. <laughs> hansen or henson i don't yeah, know which one it is yeah. Hanson Brothers means a different thing to right. the kids today. Right. Well, the kids, by the kids, we mean 35 year olds. Yes. Yeah. They are closer to my yeah. age, probably a little older. Yeah. Anyways, so. So now it's, it's done. Ramrod's going to jail. She can suck some more dicks, do some sucking fucks, and then go off to San Diego. This is where everybody dreams to, like, to retire, San Diego. Right. So, there, so uh, Tom, Walsh, Tom Walsh, he's yeah. like. Let me get you a hot dog. He bitches about the price, like three fifty. What the fuck? I thought Tom bought the hot dogs. Yeah, he did. Oh, okay. I'm saying, and he's like, because he's bitching about the price. He's like, yeah. I can't believe I'm buying a fucking whore a, a fucking three fifty hot dog. So they both been working the street, so they got plenty of tales to tell from yeah. the different sides. Right. Though they're just trying to one up each other. She's like, yeah. yeah, I just had to get piss on me. Well, you know what? Reversed. I, <laughs> yeah, and and it's, it's, well, I don't know. Maybe they went back and forth. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I can't. I can't say what happened in the bedroom because I didn't watch the director's cut or anything. Right. The, yeah, they don't even have that on the laser disc. Right. <laughs> it even says on there, no golden showers. No scenes. golden showers. That's the piss tape everyone's been talking about. And Yeah, they're kind of like one-upping each other. He's like, oh, yeah, well, I just found a 12-year-old that had to fuck a Rottweiler. You know, and they're just going back and forth. It's the disgu- Like, I don't get Tom's uh, character because he's so hell-bent on imprisoning all these fucking prostitutes. But at the same time... He's like, yeah, you're just people trying to live your life. I don't get Tom. He's a real piece of shit. No, I mean, I hate him. He, oh. I don't think he approves of uh, <coughs> um, oh. of. <laughs> yeah, sorry, peaches. Of the, he doesn't want. He knows they're they're better than this. He wants to end prostitution, and so he's just like, I know you're better than this. That's so he, it, it. I guess it could be seen as kind of condescending, but. It's incredibly condescending, and I think he's a real piece of shit. So after telling her, like, I don't approve of your life, he does – you're you're right. He definitely enjoy like, he likes to uh, give her – she is definitely a human in his eye, or she is a human in his eyes, and she wa- he wants to save her. Yeah. He has single-handedly picked her out, and he's like, I'm going to give you a new life. And this is even kind of shittier because he's like, I'm going to save you from your life. I'm going to take you home. And she says, you can't afford me. He opens his wallet, and he's like, yeah, those hot dogs. He opened really he had a Velcro back. wallet. He did. I guess it's a cop thing because Magnum has a Velcro wallet. Though. I don't know what it is about cops. You got to be extra protective of their wallets. Got to have the Velcro. Uh, and, and just to prove her point, as soon as she just walks to the curb, 
a John rides up. Yeah, she said, you can't afford me. I'm going to go make some more money tonight. Walks up right in front of him, gets picked up. So now we're at the, the squad car that's taking Ramrod to jail. Ramrod's handcuffed behind his back. He's in the, he's this in the is back. Like, this is a discreet cop car, so there's no cage or anything on it? No, it's, yeah, it's an undercover cop car. And so he's in back, and there's a cop with him in the back seat, and there's a cop driving. I thought for a second one of them was Mike from Breaking Bad, but it wasn't. <laughs> the one that gets, because it was Ramrod, you remember, he's a cowboy, so he's got some cowboy boots on. You don't get kicked Spurs, for, some, yeah. for some shit kickers. Oh, you, okay. So, like, he's like, Ramrod's, I think, faking like he's sick or something, because he's, like, laying out in the back seat. Oh, God, I had too many bullets tonight, okay? And then he just kicks the fucking cop in the face, fucks him up, does a fucking... A head scissor on the cop driving. Yeah. Hurricane Rana's him. The fucking car crashes. Ramrod, meanwhile, he's can't go behind his back. Just roll, stop, drops, and rolls out of the cop car and takes off. So we just joined Tom arriving at the, the uh, police headquarters to scold the fuck out of these two cops for letting Ramrod get away. Right. He's like, you're so fucking lucky that he did not murder you, because now I get to murder you, and I'm really excited about that. I hear you took the fucking paperclip. I'm going to go tell uh, Officer Jackson you took the paperclip. So, like, everybody, APB, we are going to get Ramrod, and we're going to put him away. All right, and we're cutting over to Ramrod, and he's in handcuffs. He's got to get out of them. Uh, he stopped, and where do you go? You go to Roscoe's garage. Of course. And... Roscoe's this old black guy, and he's got the hacksaw, and then fucking Ramrod. He has no respect for anybody. This guy's no. helping him out, and he he drops a boy on him. He's like, "Hey, he boy, does. you gonna?" And he's like, "Puts the," and then Roscoe puts the fucking hacksaw right to his throat. Like, yeah. what'd you say, motherfucker? And you know, Ramrod's a sweet talking uh, southerner, so he's like, "Oh, I didn't. I uh, just that's just a form of expression, a form of affection. Where I come from, baby. Come Don't on. stifle my one a." Eh? Can you get me out of here? And he's like, he gets him out. And then he's like, all right, I'm going to take the Eldorado. He's like, motherfucker, $500, you ain't getting no Eldorado. You're getting that motherfucking car there. Just go ahead and put it on my credit, okay? Yeah, he doesn't even have the fucking 500 that he was offering. No. And he just talks his way out. He's like, he's like... Yo, man, call up Fast Eddie. I need to get some gear. He's like, all right, I'll do that. And then he takes off. So we, we're joining uh, Princess. We know that she's been being picked up by a bunch of guys. She's just doing her rounds at, uh, of the street life. Right, back on the street. And she's got, oh God, who's, who's that guy? Uh, I don't even remember. But she has got this fucking wormy little fucking dude. Uh, dweeb. Total dweeb. He, oh, my God. He looks like that bald-headed guy who does the song. I can't bald-headed even... geek. He is a bald... He's got his little fucking hat on. I can't remember... He kind of looks like a live-action Mr. Magoo. I mean. He does kind of look like a live... But he sees exactly what's in front of him, and he's very excited to bring All this right. woman back. And he hands her a 50, and she's like, what's the extra 25 for? Well, ma'am, I got to say, you know... It's a good deal, man. I, extra uh, 25 bucks. I thought maybe you'd like to give me the shrimp. Excuse me? She doesn't even know about the shrimp. Your toes? I'd like to suck them. And she's like, oh, okay, we can do that. Let me go clean up. No, 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 no. I like the dirty shrimping. And he pulls it. He pulls out a thing of Zatarans. He wants to put that on her toes, too. He's going, it's like... And she's like, whatever, you freak. Went in Louisiana, fucking do this in Louisiana. So she immediately, this is why you know she's good at her job. She's like, well, you've been a bad little boy, haven't you? Yes, ma'am, I have. And he's just crying already. She's like, yeah, we're going to have to turn you over and really pummel you. nauseating. She earned that $50. (laughs) You know, that guy is a very happy client. That's why we need prostitutes in the world. So Ramrod, he makes it over to Fast Eddie at the Gay Leather Bar. He's the guy you go to if you need weaponry. First guy in all cinema history to have face tattoos. He is, uh, he's Ramrod's Jack Battalier. He's his weapons master. Good call. He is. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, he's like, yeah, he's got some weird. I don't. It's like facial smudge tattoos. I don't know what. It's like, it's like it was like proto tribal. It was some weird shit going on. It was like someone did a Hannah tattoo with sharpies on his face. <laughs> yeah, someone maybe that's it. He just fell asleep and someone just sharpied <laughs> his fucking could, head. Could be it, and yeah. he doesn't even know that he's all fucked up. Right. 
And, of course, this is, like you said, this is where Ramrod comes to get his guns, to get right. his knives, get all of his good shit. Yeah, he has a gun okay, especially to get a switchblade. But then again, I think switchblades were illegal. They probably still are illegal. Yeah, they are. Back yeah. then. And then he hands him, like, a revolver. He's like, no, 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 no. I need an automatic. You got to pay real cash for that. But Ramrod doesn't want to hear this, so he puts the gun to Why Eddie's did everyone neck? put up with Ramrod's shit? Because you cannot trust this guy at all. In a world full of sheep, he's a shark. It's because of the cock smog. He's working men with the cock smog. Are you kidding me? He Whoa. can sweet talk anybody. You did say this was a gay part of town. Yeah, this is a gay leather bar. So Eddie uh, probably. Fast Eddie. Fast Eddie. Well, we know why I call him fast, because he is a, a premature ejaculator. Oh. Yeah, so he's probably losing yeah. his shit right now, especially. So he puts, yeah, he puts a switchblade that he just he didn't even buy yet from Fast. He takes Fast Eddie's switchblade and puts it into his throat. Yes, and it's like I need an automatic. And he's like, then he goes, let me check. You got a safe. He opens it. Yep. This is <laughs> gay leather bar criminals have better gun safety than your average American. They keep their automatics yeah. in the safe. And you know what there aren't here, despite all conservative criticisms today? Children. There's no oh. children in here. <laughs> no, there are no children in the gay leather bar. Yes. <laughs> yeah. God, they act like children are just roaming around in gay leather bars. They're and not. he's asking about Princess, because apparently... He doesn't know what, uh, about Princess, and she's like, all I know about her, she's straight outlaw, man. She has no pimp. Because he's like, where's her pimp? I'll talk to her pimp, and I'll find yeah. her. Well, didn't she ever, and he's got to use, you know, he's looking down on him, using those stern, direct eye contact. People don't know, sheep especially, don't know how to deal with direct eye contact. Mm -hmm. We already know he's caught in the cock smog, and so he's crumbling. Well... She came to L.A. and she immediately, like, uh, several months back, and she worked under a pimp named Dorsey. He was a sugar pimp, whatever that means. He's got diabetes is what it means. Oh, that that makes sense, actually. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, okay, now we got, we're back on the street with Ed and Tom. And Ed is like, he's he's been on the job literally three hours. Three he's hours. He's already just hard- He's just like he was clean it shaven all. before. He's stubbly now. He's on his eighth pack of and cigarettes. He's like the freaks, the geeks, the suckers, the fuckers. How do you fucking put up with this shit, Tom? I can't stand it. I couldn't even finish my hot dog. I can't look at another one of these fucking ugly prostitutes walking the streets like lizards. And so yeah, and then Tom's like, "Hey, you get used to it. <laughs> you get used to it." So we see Princess. She just fucked a legless dude in a wheelchair. She she's a saint. She's she's fucking people. Like, this is why we need legalized prostitution because these people aren't getting laid. This is my argument for it. Look at all these people who just aren't getting regular. They just want to have some sex. They just want to have some sex, and because of the world, we outlaw. You think we'll ever get to that point? I mean, we already we're getting to the point where drugs are going to be illegal. We are, hopefully, at least decriminalized, hopefully. Oh. But I think we will get to the point. I mean... Because conservative... Or, like, the whole fucking religion side of the, of the world well, we, I mean, technically, off. we do. I mean, Vegas, obviously. Yeah, Vegas. Legalized, but, but I'm saying, like, it, I think it will spread uh, over the next... At least in Chicago and the bigger cities. Uh. They'll get legalized prostitution soon enough. And it's going to be a better world for it. That's we'll get world. there. I think. Well, I don't know. Time. I mean, I guess, I guess you can't get laid and you can't. You don't have no money. You're still going to be crazy. But that's true. But I think a lot of these states where they have nothing to sell, they're going to start mean, selling their women. <laughs> great place. Great time to live. <laughs> so yeah. So um, where are we at? <laughs> Finish it up with their legless John. <laughs> and he's just like, I can't believe you're leaving. You're the best. You know. Hey. You know, look, can I look you up in San Diego? She's like, yeah, baby, whatever. She's just like, yeah, she know. again, she's ready to quit. And so just hearing all this, she's like, I don't want to think about working this job in a few months when I'm in San Diego. But right. she got that great job at the uh, I think the San Diego SeaWorld. She's going to it's start. either that or the Hobby Lobby in San Diego. She's going to be a whale trainer. That's it. Yeah. She's going to be a sperm whale trainer. There you go. There we go. All right. So we got Louise, who are, was our female cop. I okay. caught her name later. And she's back at the bar that Silky's still there. Of course. He hangs out there. That's his uh, you know, establishment. And she pulls a gun on him, 
and one of the pimps goes, "You ain't black woman, you <laughs> shit colored," because she's a sellout black yeah. woman. Yeah, you know? she she came in on a cover. She was showing off her thighs, and they were losing their eyes. And then she pulled out a gun, and that and was she no put fun. the gun to Silky's face because she's like, because he was like, "I don't know no ramrod." I don't the fuck. And then she pulls the gun out, and he's like, "I know ramrod." I last time I heard he was at Roscoe's. So we got our lead now, and we're going to start following it. We put the call in to all the cops, so they're all chasing the same bone. So Princess, it's her break time. She stand, she goes down to the the horror bar where all the hoes. I thought it was like a lesbian bar at first because it was all women. Yeah, Maybe yeah. it was. I don't yeah. know. But this was clearly like a plastic hangout where it's like only top tier, like trusted and they can, clientele. I think I'm, I'm going to say it probably was a lesbian bar because it's like when they can get the fuck away from men for a while. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So. So they're they're just swapping stories. It's a great time, but again, I okay. From the customer service side of things, I understand their conversation, but at the same time, it's like we've seen some of the experiences Princess has had. Nothing but respect. People just paying for something that they want. One yeah, guy wanted to get but... pissed on. This guy wanted to get wanted to shrimp her toes. The the legless guy, who knows what he got, but he was super thankful. There was no arguing. There was no haggling or anything. Well, maybe this is a good night, though. Yes. Yes. But we hear Blue Chip. She, you know, she just got out. She just got on bail within an hour because her pussy's that good yeah. that her pimp's got to get her out. And she's proud of it. She's like, yeah. my pimp fucking came, bailed me out immediately, paid 500 straight cash because he knows my pussy will be right back out there, be flipping the wad in no time. So Princess is like, what the fuck? Am I like a freak magnet? Why do I get the trampers? And she's just like, does anybody just want to fuck anymore? Is it all about shrimping? Right. She just learned about shrimping today. She's like, is that all about <laughs> shrimping? What is happened all- to good old traditional suck and fuck? I want stationary. I want a man to look me in the eyes while he fucking blows his load. While that's going on. And these girls are just, they're just having a good time, blowing off some steam. And then fucking, I'm a, I'm, his name is probably Phil. Phil rolls in from the convention they're having. We learned from Willie Dynamite. That's where the fucking hooker fucking really happens yes. at the conventions. And he just rolls in. Hey there, lady. My, see this face here? It's see more ass than a cowboy saddle. Oh, boy. He's real, he knows how to sweet talk a woman. Yes. And, and, she, and <laughs> I thought they were going to tell him, get the fuck out of here. But then Prince is like, I got to get as much money as I can. I got to go to San Diego. Right. This you know? was interesting because I thought she was taking the comfort. You know, she's already made a lot of money. She's been doubling every job. Every single John she's talked to tonight that we're aware of, have, aware of has doubled the money they paid her. And she's still like, got to well, get back out there. she's willing to do the freaky shit. You know? she, she, she doesn't. He hates it, but she'll do it. Right so price. she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. You want me to wear a saddle or you want to wear a saddle? Whatever. Let's get this fucking show on the road. Right. Uh, so we're going to cut over to Ramrod, though, because he's rolling up on a house, and he's just going to let himself he's, in. He's, he's, he's rolled up on Dorsey's apartment. Yeah. Building. Of course, the door's locked, so he looks the over. Sugar pimp. Very pimp. Inju- uh, okay, I want to point out, you don't know this, but this is a very funny scene because Dorsey is played by Fred Rerun Barry. From what's happening, which if you you grew up in the seventies, you remember rerun the character of rerun this fat like comic relief guy, and so it's just funny seeing him because I don't think he, I don't think he ever act outside of what's happening in this, and he's playing okay. a pimp, so it's funny because he like we said he's got the sugar, so he's just like he's like wearing bikini briefs and like a like a robe and just eating like ice cream or some <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Ramrod, he can't get in the building because it's, it's you got to get buzzed in. So he right. takes the fire escape up. He, yep. Somehow he knows where Dorothy's, Dorothy's apartment is. He got exact address. You know, <laughs> yeah. they use the three board coordinate system. So he climbs up to his level. Just maybe he knocked on every door in the apartment. <laughs> no, he just kicked them all in. Yeah, beat the shit out of the person and then left. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you Dorsey. <laughs> He's got that fucking pimp sticks, just whipping dicks and pussies. <laughs> He's got his hanger. <laughs> Oh, God. So I busts in on Dorsey. Immediately and, grabs his dick. Yeah, he does. Pins him against the wall. And then gets the info he needs. Because he's like, I haven't seen Princess in fucking a year. I don't fucking know. Yeah. You better tell me, motherfucker. Stabs him in the balls. Right. And then fucking leaves. So he's got the information he wants on Princess. And meanwhile... Princess is working with that John. Yeah. She's getting exactly what she just said she wanted. 
This guy doesn't want anything weird. <laughs> yeah. There's no saddle. There's no cocaine. No. There's no shrimp. There's no piss. There's no booze. There's nothing. Straight traditional <laughs> Christian values. Missionary happening. position. Missionary sex. But now that she's had a taste of that freaky stuff, maybe she's like, I kind of like it. I- because she can't go back. Once you go, once you go into that freak world, you can't go back to traditional sex. So she's completely bored. She's literally s- counting the tiles on the ceiling. Right. She won't make eye contact, even though she said, "I need eye contact." She won't look at this man. He's saying, "Come on, babe, put your lips into it. Let's get a little movement. Let's get a little jiggle." Come on. Like, I didn't pay. I didn't pay you an extra fifty bucks to fuck a corpse. What's going on here? So he finally wraps <sighs> up. <laughs> It's that disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, go clean yourself off. She gets up. I want. I like that she, was, she kept the stockings on. She did a hess. That's She's right. totally naked, but that stockings, that was, yep. that was hot. And then she goes to take the horror shower, which is just, you know, dampen some toilet paper yep. and wipe her crotch. <laughs> and that's one ply, so that <laughs> stuff. Well, yeah, it's in a, it's in a horror hotel, yeah. so they don't, get, they don't have the good fucking Charmin in there You know she's all. walking out with little bits of toilet paper in her pubes. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hard to get all that out. She's going to yeah. have to have a high-pressure <laughs> yeah. shower. Yeah. She might want to go down to the Vice Squad shower in order to so get So while she's out. freshening up, we'll say, he goes through, going through her wallet to get his money back. He goes full griff. Yeah. And he fucking pulls out. She's got the tape to, or the rubber banded up wad. Fucking full on cash. This girl did not need to be out working. It, she's yeah. got so much money. She comes out. She's like, what the fuck? He's like, you should be paying me for fucking you. That was awful. And he kind of had a point. But still, hey, man, give yeah. her half. All right. You still paid for the service. You leave a Yelp review and move <laughs> yes. on. Give her a one star and move on with your life. And so, uh, well, I'll give Princess credit here because she doesn't stand by idly by. She no. charges him. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is her last night. She's out. She right. wants to get the fuck out. So she's like, "You ain't taking my shit." How did you get this full one? You fucked the whole football squad. Grabs her, just throws her back on the bed, yeah. gets on top of her again, insults her, and she's like, "I have the meanest N word pimp in the world." <laughs> And he's, he finds you, he's going to fuck you up. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, bitch. Lady, I should slap you for using such racist words, but I'm just going to go ahead and fucking leave. <laughs> so he's like, how dare you use that word? That's not your word to use. And then you're kind of like, this, the John's kind of right. Right. This is what she gets for saying, I want traditional and missionaries. Like, I'm going to take this money and I'm going to donate it to the NAACP. In your name. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. You whore. Slams the door. So Princess calls down for clean sheets? <laughs> yeah, is that well, code? Was no, this some kind of code? Well, yeah. She's in the she's in the uh, exterminator uh, yeah. hotel, yeah. But I just mean, was it code in that she's just been assaulted and robbed? So I thought maybe that was like a code. No, like, I, think, I, I literally think she just wants clean sheets. She just wants clean sheets. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, so there's this lady and her little Asian friend, Mr. Play, Miyagi-looking dude. Just play Mahjong. Yeah. Colorful character. I would have loved to see more about these two, but we don't We don't get that much. And uh, she comes down, and the lady who runs this Lahore Hotel, she's like, hey, there's some somebody, some character out there looking for you. We're thinking, oh, my God, Ramrod. Well, yeah, we just left Ramrod. He knew about our location and everything. And so like, they, they asked for you by name. So Shit. this is how good Princess is. People just know her by yeah. name. We had outside with her and just we're, we're getting that creepy vibe and everything. We're seeing just dark alleys. Zarks could be anywhere. Yeah. Well, no, the alleys were kind of uh, kind of dry. They were very so, dry. But still, yeah. still, it was dark. We know. might not. I thought I heard a dripping noise. And a hand reaches out. We get a jump scare. And then a chauffeur. Just a, a, a very uh, familiar one to us. It's Manningly. It's Manningly. Before Manning. Came but between um, being Junebug's chauffeur yes. and coming to work for us, he also worked for a guy who likes to fuck horrors. That's right. So uh, he's not in yellow yet. We know no. Mattingly looks best in yellow. Mattingly, right. stunning today. <laughs> yes. But this guy's got him in like an off gray type of outfit, and it, it's just not fitting for. Madam, I hear your pussy is the best. Will you please come with me? Yes. Master did ask me to have a quick gummy to see if it really <laughs> is worth it. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> the Cadillac limo awaits. So she gets in the Cadillac limo and they take off. 
All right. And we cut over to the cops. And again, they had just learned about Roscoe from right. Silky. Yeah. So they're getting information out of Roscoe. They've also got him pinned down, gun to his head. <laughs> yeah. As far as we know, Roscoe's done nothing but be a black man in L.A. Yeah. Well, that's enough for them. That is enough for them. He gives up. The, he says Ramrod's looking for Princess. You know, yeah. and like... He's learned about Dorsey. Tom is like, holy shit, he's going to fucking kill Princess. And he feels responsible because he got her into this fucking mess. Correct. So like, we, so, have to, we have to get fucking Ramrod. Rightfully so. Tom does feel guilty about it. So, yeah, so they send him over. They, the last thing I heard of, he went to see Dorsey. Yeah, and uh, I guess I, I guess they go see Dorsey, and he tells him about the Or hotel. I think what, no, what it is is they go to, they, I guess they hear that somebody got their balls cut off so they go to Dorsey okay and Dorsey like gives up because it kind of happens simultaneously yeah. that yeah. they talk to Roscoe and then they learn yeah. from Dorsey that they're heading to the golden yeah hotel. he gave somehow he I guess maybe that was where he would set up princess at the golden motel so he's like you could try the gold motel so that's where Ramrod is going to the golden motel where is where she's at right now right and Tom of course is going to go out with this information and direct all of his cops that way and it just so happens that our shitty cops are the first ones. Yeah, the to ones arrive. that get that uh, Ramrod escaped from. Right. And so with Tom giving the word, like, you need to get there now, bust in there immediately. We follow them in and we see that shit's already gone down in the Golden Motel. Right. Ramrod has already been there. He right. fucked everybody up. That's it's right. how da- well, you'll learn how dangerous he is later on in a second because they're like, what the fuck? And like the 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 one the the clerk, she's like, I don't know anything. Yeah, I'm not giving anything up. And then the Asian fellow comes in. What did you do to my friend? Because he doesn't know what's going on. Right. The guy. Did you notice the cop called him an ornamental? I heard that, and I was like, that's a good way from saving yourself from saying something rude. Like you know, what no, you I have just, to say. He's just a moron. Is what right. it is. But this Asian man does not take kind to such horrible, you know, it's not even Christmas time, so don't call him an ornamental. Right. And then everybody was kung fu fighting. So these are our stooge cops. Yeah, this is a little levity before, you know. They always get their ass beat. And this Asian man, they literally do a gag where he, like, throws one guy into the ceiling, and we see his head pop through the drop ceiling. The other guy just gets thrown into a clock. Both of them get knocked the fuck out. Because, hey, come on, fuck and off. then Tom arrives. He calms everybody down. Right. And they're like, you know, and then the, the chick's still like, the clerk, I didn't see nothing. I didn't tell nothing. She's lying. Of course she's lying. All right. And now we're going to be going back outside. What's we, we know that Ramrod's been here, but where the fuck is he? Well, he's on the streets. He's prowling, looking for Princess. He stops Dixie, who's a, who, he was, who, was in, who was at the uh, bar earlier. Right. He managed to see a Cadillac leaving the Golden Motel. He doesn't follow it, but he does ask Dix, Dixie about this Cadillac limo. And she's like, I don't know nothing about it, but Coco down the street, she might know something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure her pimp travels in... Uh, Cadillac like that. So he pulls up. He, She's he, literally down the street. So right. We just... <laughs> and then, then you can just see some of that cock smog just billowing out. He's 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 gonna learn. He's gonna be soft at the beginning. Right. It's like baby, come here. She. she She's the one person who doesn't know Ramrod, and this whole like you know. Even Dixie, he <laughs> grabbed her by the head and pulled her in. It was like you keep fucking talking here, bitch. Right, so she's like, "Hey, baby, you a cop? Do I look like a fucking cop?" Right? He points to like his hair; it's a little curly, and we know cops don't have curly hair. Cops don't get perms. That's right. That's against regulation. It is against regulation. And he's like, "I hear you're good, baby. Why don't you come in? Come, let me see you." And then she's dumb, gum Coco. She goes. You in. got that ornamental look. I really like. Right. Well, she was ornamental. <laughs> and as soon as she pops her head in there, he grabs her by the hair, yanks her in halfway, and takes off. <laughs> Drives <laughs> off demanding to know about the pimp's whereabouts. Where's the man with the limo, Cadillac limo? And then we just see her like. He, he drives into a Zarkta alley. Yep. And, and just, just leaves her for her. the Zarkta. That's Throw, right. Literally throws her in a pile of trash. It's like the mob, uh, you know, bear, you know, having pigs eat their corpses or whatever. So. Ramrod knows that because they, they they cops have already went to Roscoe, so they know what kind of car he's driving. So he right. needs a new car. He's our, he's a step ahead. He's always a step ahead. Right. So he gets out on foot. He's running around, and he just happens on a paper boy, just loading up the you know the news boxes and everything. Right. So got that switchblade? You're gonna use it. 
I don't. Did he stab him? I think he just. I thought he just flipped the guy over a staircase. And the guy fucking. I thought him. he got his knife in his hand, but yeah, he just <laughs> flips the guy over, and it's like the subway entrance, so it's yeah. apparently a forty-five foot drop. Because right. this guy goes down, it does not get up. <laughs> no. Now he's got himself a nice white truck. All right, now Princess has arrived at the owner of this Cadillac limousine. It's a huge mansion. Oh my god, beautiful mansion. The type of uh, I, I can tell already because it's a McMansion. Awful chandelier right mm. in the entryway and everything. Mm. This is the type of man who goes to a pizza place, orders the breadsticks, and demands the house Italian dressing. I am not leaving here <laughs> until I get my Italian dressing. I didn't order salad. <laughs> Give it to me. I've been coming here yeah. for 20 years. <laughs> it is that. It's totally that guy's energy. You know it off. is. Yeah. You notice that there were breadsticks laid out, but he's there like, were. he was like, prostitutes are not allowed to eat these. These are for the master. <laughs> and he takes her to a room, and he's like, quiet, don't speak. Takes her to a room. Does it? Do we? we we'll just continue along with okay. the storyline, so we're not all over the place. Okay, so she walks out of the room. She's wearing a sexy wedding dress, and immediately, do 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 do. What the fuck are we about to walk into? That's what she's thinking. She's like, they're, but they're paying me a lot, so I'll, I'll go along with it. Right. And he's like, remember, no speaking. None a word. Okay. Let's just review. What? I don't I, This was well, a strange scenario because we're like mixing ceremonies here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, we got to get there yeah. in a second. Yeah. It's just hilarious to me that she wanted the traditional sex, hated it. Going back to the weird stuff now, and she's like, I want that traditional sex again. You can never I please a woman. can't right? stand princess. She <laughs> needs to get she her is head straight. You know what? Perfect name because she's a princess. Right. Nothing yeah. is ever good enough for her. Yeah. She's the princess who feels the pee under her mattress. She had pee on her mattress earlier. <laughs> yeah, she did. So she's in this lingerie. She's being led into this room. And again, Mattingly tells her, not a single no matter what happens word no matter what happens so we walk in we're in a funeral parlor now what the fuck there's candles everywhere there's a dead body as far as we know open casket. casket yeah old man so she slowly approaches it and the old man pops up and says boo yeah, and she's like, what the fuck? And then he's like, no! He, he, he lets out a sting right now. Yeah. And he's like, she tugged Manning Lee. This- I remember Manning Lee. Manning Lee told us this whole story. That guy was a freak, wasn't he? Yes, yeah, yeah. he was. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, this fucking slut you brought me spoke. <laughs> no one's to speak. What, was, what did he want? What was the fucking thing? Like, first of all, a wedding and a funeral. Was she supposed to just blow him in the casket? <sighs> was she just supposed to be scared and not scream? As far as we Why know. Why would you want to scare someone and not want them to scream? I thought that's the point of scaring someone. Right. Okay. So it wasn't supposed to be that she just had her way with the dead body. He's not He's not uh, into reverse necrophilia because he's not dead, but he wants to be dead and wants to be you got to remember, too, he's an old man. This is poor, before Viagra. He's probably a limp dick. He can't get it off. So this is... You can't have sex. Okay, so, so scary. Thing. It's like people are into balloon popping. He's into scaring women who can't scream. So I I've got just the movie for him. It's called Tingler because <laughs> that was his type of lady. Why wouldn't you just get a deaf mute then? That would be the. That would be. Or does the, he like the challenge of them not scream? He's got the problem know. with that. He doesn't know enough deaf mute prostitutes. Deaf mute prostitute. Deaf mute prostitute. So anyway, she know. screams out. He's furious. He's going full sting right now. My night of sexual endeavors is over. So she's like, you guys, are Mattingly takes her out. And she's like, you guys are fucking freaks. I don't know. It's like, could we use you tomorrow? I say, are you available tomorrow? And she's like, fuck, no, I'm not coming back here. You better fucking pay me. Right. And he's like, no, my, tomorrow's my day off. I want <laughs> to make you scream. <laughs> So then, he, and she's like, and you better pay for my cab. Like, everything's taken care everything's of. Don't taken worry. Care of. No problems. All right. So we're going over to the cops now who, who are just driving along the road, just so happen to stumble upon Co- Coco crawling out into the middle <laughs> of the street. And now they're like, they like decide to 
divert all the crew over yeah. to her location? The entire vice squad is so, so... I guess at this point, you do want to get Ramrod off the street. He's killing people left and right. That's true. You think homicide would be involved by this time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, okay, we cut to a scene where Princess, she, she's in the cab that Maddie only got for her. She's, it's been a long night. It's probably like fucking four in the morning at this time. We see the misdirection happening here because mm-hmm. we see the cops drive by. Everybody's heading to Coco to talk to Coco. And, yeah, we've got um, Princess sleeping in the cab who is just parked on the side of the road for some reason. Maybe Princess I thought, said, at, I thought it was at a light. I, I thought know. it was at a light, too, but it was clearly like on the curb. Oh, no. He was stopped to let the cops go by. And then That's how you do it. Behind her, Ramrod. Now, Ramrod doesn't realize she's in the car, does he? Or does no, she he does. It? Okay. Yeah, he's following it. Okay, so then she stops. She gets out. And there's like a, there's like a fucking stuffed animal stand in, in the middle of the night selling a- stuffed animals. I mean, come on. The the vendors selling these stuffed animals know some of these prostitutes go home to kids. They've got <laughs> That is a mar- untapped market. Exactly. They've got yeah. cash on them. Yeah. They're often drunk or high. <laughs> Of course they're going to spend a little money. And he could probably be like, oh, that one? Yeah, that's $20. Note to self. We're starting ho, uh, Hodegos. Hodegos. <laughs> so, yeah, so she's getting that. Ramrod's watching her from across the street, ready to make his move. A couple of her prostitute friends, she goes over. She's trying to make a call. She's calling up. Uh, she's calling her mom. Yeah. Because that's where Lisa is. Right. She's, and- she's got the life. She's in San Diego. I mean, that would be weird. It's like four in the morning. You're calling yes. your mom. Like, you got me up. Because she, all she wants to do is like, I just I just want to talk to Lisa. You right. Know? She's panicked. I mean, she just uh, had an old man scare her. So she's like, I <laughs> got to talk to my daughter. Her hair turned white. It was exactly. Amazing. So our prostitute friends are like, oh, my God. Blue Chip and Dixie are rolling on. We need to warn Princess that Ramrod is coming after her. <laughs> and so they start walking towards her. They see her on the payphone. And then we see Ramrod in the background revving up that truck, <laughs> fucking guns it. Dixie can't get out of the way and gets run over, disappears as soon as she gets hit by that car, yeah. by the way. Yeah, well, he, yeah, and he, he runs right into a building and shit. Yeah. And, then, and then Princess takes off. Gets down an alley. Ramrod manages to reverse it, get into that alley, drives down. Re- he's got freakish ability. Because he reaches out, snags her, and just throws her in the in the truck. Yeah, that was... Yeah, he's got, like, fucking plastic man arms. He went he, stretch He opens strong. the passenger side passenger. door. She's laying on the ground, and he grabs While her. While driving. He's got <laughs> steady wheel, foot on gas, reaches eight feet across out the door, grabs her, pulls her in. Amazing. You need to be afraid of a man like Ramrod. Right. The agility he shows here. So the cops, I guess, are made aware. Oh yes, because some uh, some chips, Ponch and uh, John notice the car because they know the car he's in. Yes. So they start following, and so now we get the boringest fucking like filler scene ever. Yes. Where we just get cops like they're like trading spots, they're tailing them, and then they're like like peeling off so another cop so that that Ram right. won't pick up the tail. They don't want because they. Assume he has a gun in the car. They don't want to get Princess killed, so you know they're just trying to move very quietly, keep an eye on him and everything, see where he's going to go to. So Ramrod arrives at his destination. Apparently, this is one of his or his fuck pad. Right. This is he's the original hipster. He's the original person thought warehouses be a great place. to Right. Live, and so. so he's got a big open apartment complex and everything. Right. Uh, or concept is what I meant to say. Yeah. He's got, of course, the mattress with the fucking straps all ready to go. and everything. He's got all the accoutrements of torturing a woman. Yeah, this is his other fuck pad. Because remember, we saw him at that other place with the Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. So this is fuck pad, too. So they ride up the freight elevator because, of course, you said it. He's the original hipster. So he's got he's well. That's why he's wearing the country western shirt and all that shit. That's right. (laughs) So he's got the freight elevator and he turns it off. He has control over the freight elevator too. (laughs) So he tosses Princess on that bed, and he's promising her some punishment. He's like, you you saw how bad Ginger had it? Yeah, you're going to get it worse, girl. Well, it just so happens he left the double donger right <laughs> next to him, and Ginger grabs a hold of that, and she does it. Ass double donger. She does not cover the tip of it with her hand. She pummels it like you would a bat. Right. And she runs, and then he grabs a bull whip, and he's chasing her. Oh, man. He goes... 
goes full. Who is that? Dutch Mantel who used to use the whip? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the police, now they're ready to move in. Now, And they, they immediately know it because they saw the light turn on. They're like, fifth right. floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to be him. So they're like, there's three different entrances. He turned the freight elevator off, but there's the, the ladder, the fire escape, and then there's the stairway. Right. So they start sending, moving everybody into position here. And back, back upstairs, in- Ramrod, he's, <laughs> Indiana Jones, sir, grabs her. Got her finally shackled on that bed. He's got yep. the switchblade out. He's popping the, the the buttons off her dress. He's assuming that he's working clean here. No one's coming to bother him, so he's got all fucking day to have his way. And then he pulls out that pimp stick and whaps her pussy you fucking hard as shit. Just he's going for the second one. The cops, the cops waited to let her get whapped one time on the pussy. Right, right. I guess they, Tom's like, they'll teach her a lesson. Right. They know his MO, and they're like, right. okay, he's got the pussy whip out. That means his gun <laughs> is by the table somewhere else. So they figured this is the time. So our two goon cops, the you know the ones who are always getting their ass beat, they are asked to lead this. So they push over the door. And it doesn't matter if he didn't have his gun in his hand because he's like an old fucking cowboy from the West. Fastest hands in in West L.A. or wherever L.A. we're at because he managed to reach over, grab the gun, and shoot a cop right. without the element of surprise on his side. Yeah. Amazing. But he knows he's outnumbered, so he leaps through a window. Yes, onto the rooftop. A- yeah, fortunately, there's like an extension down below, so he only falls like 10 feet, and then he just takes off. Making so his escape. We're running across rooftops. We got police giving chase. Louise, she's the woman cop, so she has to stay behind mm. with the princess because, you know, women. And we watch as they just run around. Uh, eventually, Ramrod does get himself back down to the ground and jumps in a car. He carjacks a guy. Yep. And he's driving off. But I guess Tom was waiting on the street level, too, because he drives after him. Yeah, this was a really boring... Yes. Finale. How do you conclude everything Wings has done in this movie? It's going to be hard. So, yeah. so yeah, that we just get kind of a very slow. You could say they copped out on the ending. Yeah. Yeah. Boy so chase. Tom, uh, he gets shot through his windshield in the shoulder, so he's going to be okay. It went all the way through. That's right. Uh, Ramrod hides under a bridge for a second, turns himself around. Tom turns and very, like, uh, slowly kind of edges into under the bridge area. And then uh, Ramrod just goes flying by him, yeah. gets over to a warehouse, gets out. And, or He got shot. Yeah. And shot at, which scared him. And then he jumped in the warehouse. And then Tom. We, he crashed the van. Yeah. So now he doesn't have his van, gets out on foot. Runs around in the warehouse. Tom still just slowly, grandma style, driving at the warehouse. Ramrod thinks he sees an opportunity to sneak around and jump on the hood of yeah, Tom's well, car. He, well, he jumps on the top of the car. Not yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, and then he gets like flung off. Yes. Tom hits the brakes, which is hard because he's only flying five miles an hour at the time. Incredible. Yeah. And then he pins Ramrod against a wall with his car. And right. he's going he's gonna to take him in, you know. But then Ramrod's like, no, you ain't. He goes for his automatic. Automatic. Pulls it out. As for, before he can get the drop on uh, on old Tom, Tom shoots him in the head. That's right. It would have been better if he just leaned on the fucking gas and just crushed, crushed him. Crushed him, yeah. But He'd no. better be able to take him in, despite him not having legs. So now it's finally morning. We got we got a uh, fucking princess. She's got bandages all over her pussy because it's been ripped. <laughs> and she's getting taken away. Tom's got that. He he retrieved the, the, the stuffed animal for her child. And she's like, Tom, it's covered in fucking blood. What am I supposed to give this to my kid? Again, you could never please a princess. That's what Tom should have said here. And she's like, Tom, and this we, 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 we get left with a very inspiring message at the end of the movie. Well, she sees what Tom's trying to do. Tom is trying to wife her. And apparently the street life's not willing to leave her. So she gives this uh, beautiful line. Do you line. think that's it? Do you think she just says... Fuck it! I'm just I was born for the streets, and I'm never getting off. I don't She's know. She's just gonna what... leave her kid with her mother, and yeah, I don't know what to make of that because it's like, how do I? Well, move she's on got. From I that? mean, but this is the thing. No fucking, you know, she doesn't have health care. So yeah, she's gonna have to spend all the money she made on all the injuries. That's that's it. 
That's she, the yeah. fucked up thing about America. She got the shit kicked out of her by a psycho, and yes. she's on the hook to pay for the medical yes. shit. And she was thrust into this by the police. Yes. She was left with no choice. That She was totally blackmailed into doing this by the police, which, of course, if they went to court, it would just be a uh, judgment of character, and they'd be like, you're a prostitute. They're cops. Yeah, that's why Tom did it. Yeah. yeah. So she rattles off the truth. I don't know why you do it. You're never going to change the streets, Walsh. And then he goes, Muh. and then we hear the neon slime. Because you never get rid of the neon slime. Never get rid of the neon slime. It's neon for a reason, because it's always festering and growing. Right. Like the blob. That's what that's about, probably. The blob was neon slime. It was. We'll do that next Schlocktober. Maybe next Schlocktober. All right. There you have it, another great performance from Wings Hauser. I think guy should have given more opportunities. Exactly. Uh, Easily one of the best. We Next week, we got a movie that Griff unearthed. Uh, he found it on our buddy Mike, who is on our phenom- Phenomena episode, which if you haven't checked it out, check it out. Because he has he's kind enough to let us on his Plex account, where he Ooh, has yeah. many plethora, a plethora of horror movies. This one's... Not, Technically, I mean, people get killed. It's yes. not a horror movie. This is a movie I've never heard of. Griff never heard heard of. You're going to need to hear about it next week. Yes. I, I hear it's on YouTube, by the way. Oh, okay. Because I put it out on the Twitter, and people went ape shit for it. So you motherfuckers better listen to this. Because well, first of all, you better listen to this because it's a fucking good movie. Yeah. Do you want to tell people what it is, Griff? Oh, boy. I mean, I don't know how to build up this movie any better. It's just, you know, you got fucking teens in high school. Adults are nowhere to be seen. So these kids just fucking go to town on each other. There's killing. There's nudity. There's violence in the schools. There's violence on the streets. There's tits on the beach. This movie has it all. I would say it's the Peanuts high school years. Yes. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Who would be Charlie Brown? The main guy. The main guy? Okay. Yeah. Charlie Brown never gets his way, though. This is the the high school. Oh, he, he uh, uh, Charlie Brown finally says enough shit. Right. Okay. He grows hair and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's called Massacre at Central High. So look for that next week and keep it warm.